Hey, this is Nick with Salt Strong, and in this video, we're gonna make some sushi. I've got some nice fillets of grouper here that I caught, and then one of my favorites for sushi is uh, porgy. It's a really nice white meat, and it's actually perfect for a raw sushi roll. Now the grouper, we're actually gonna do a panko. We're gonna fry it in panko breadcrumb, and then uh, add our ingredients. So with the rolls, you can add anything you want. Uh, I typically do cucumber, uh, asparagus, avocado, and then cream cheese that I have in the fridge. And then the most important thing is your rice. So for rice, there's all different kinds, a short grain, long grain, and medium grain, but you wanna go with a short grain rice. It doesn't have to be a special sushi rice, just any rice that is short grain. And uh, we'll start with that. Um, the next thing is the panko bread seasonings. We'll use that for the grouper when we fry that. And then lastly, the nori sheets. You can get this at any uh, grocery store and uh, there's about five sheets in there and I'll show you how to use that. So once you get the rice in the pot you want to fill it up with some water and you would take like a wooden spoon and, and you're basically washing the rice. You're just kind of mixing it up and then the water really uh, turns milky and then you want to drain the water out. But keep the rice in and you're going to do that about three or four times and that's going to make the rice nice and sticky and nice and white. So once you're done rinsing the rice and the water is fairly clear, it's not gonna be perfectly clear, but once it's fairly clear, you wanna leave about enough water that rises so that the water is about an inch above the rice. About like that. Okay, so once the rice is ready to boil, um, I'll add just a little bit of Himalayan salt and probably a half a tablespoon of coconut oil. Like that. And then I'll boil it. I'll bring it to a boil with no lid on it. And until the water starts to drop below the rice. And I'll show what that looks like when we get to that point. Okay, so the rice is boiling and you'll see it's starting to get the hold like that. Uh, we're gonna keep it, keep boiling it um, without a lid until the water starts, to, the water level starts to drop below the rice. Okay, so now the water has dropped below the rice and you'll see that it's got the holes there. And then what we'll do is we'll take the lid, put it on top, and then uh, put your stove top down to low. And we're gonna cook this for probably about 20 minutes. All right, so when you get your nori paper, the first thing I like to do is you take it out of the package and you're gonna get one of these things that keeps them dry throw that in the garbage and then if you look at the nori I don't know if it'll show up on the camera but there's lines um, that's the way you're gonna roll the sushi so there's a there's a skinny side and a long side you what you want to do is you want to cut off this last inch because you're gonna have too much uh, nori paper in your roll unless you make really big rolls which we're not gonna do ours are gonna be just kind of medium size um, so what I'll do is we're gonna cut perpendicular to the lines that you see in the nori paper and I just get some kitchen shears and come down here about an inch and a quarter, maybe inch and a half, and cut that nice and straight. Okay, so one of the things you're gonna need when you're actually rolling the sushi roll is either a bamboo mat like this that you can probably get at any of the cooking stores uh, or actually a piece of cardboard. Uh, when I first started doing this, I would take a piece of cardboard and cut it just um, a little bit smaller than a gallon Ziploc bag. And then I would use that to actually roll the sushi roll. And then uh, eventually just you know throw the cardboard away because there's only a single use type thing. But, um, I ended up just doing the same thing with the bamboo mat. So you can just put the bamboo mat uh, inside because you'll find that it fits the uh, exact same size as a gallon Ziploc. So you put it in like that, press all the air out of it, and then seal it. And now uh, you can easily wrap your roll and it won't stick to the bamboo, of course. Uh, you'll see a lot of people just wrap it in saran wrap. I find that the, uh, the gallon Ziploc bag works the best. Okay, so we're gonna check our rice. Uh, it's been about 20 minutes and uh, we're probably done here. Open this up. And yes, the rice is done. It's nice and soft. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour this out 
into a bowl. Once you get the rice into the bowl, we're gonna be adding um, rice vinegar. Now that's why you don't wanna use an aluminum bowl because there's a chemical reaction between the vinegar and the aluminum. So you wanna use a ceramic, a glass bowl, or a wooden uh, bamboo or teak bowl. So then the way you do this is you're just gonna take the, uh, the vinegar and you're gonna pour it over the spoon. And that's probably about a quarter cup and you're gonna just kind of slice through the rice as you turn the bowl. And look at all that steam coming off. You, you, the idea is that you want the, uh, the rice to absorb the vinegar and you want the steam and the heat to get out of the rice because if you put this on the sushi or on the nori paper now, it's gonna basically cook the paper. Make sure that this is nice and cool or, or fairly cool before you actually make the roll. Okay, so while your rice is cooling, one of the things I like to do is get your uh, fish ready. And what I typically do is you don't need a lot of it, but you wanna cut the top portion of the filet. Um, I guess it would be like the, the loin. And um, I put them in the refrigerator. I've got the porgy over here and the grouper. Um, I'm gonna actually just throw them in panko. Just roll them a little bit in panko. You don't have to do anything fancy. And then uh, we're gonna drop those in oil just for a little bit until they flake. And then the porgy, we're not gonna do anything with those. Uh, we're just gonna keep them in the refrigerator, keep them cool until we're ready to use them. Okay, so once your rice is cooled off, you've got your fish uh, cooked if you're gonna do panko fry. You've got um, the raw fish ready. In this case, it's uh, porgy. Um, we're gonna start assembling them. And when you look at the nori paper, you kind of hold up to the light. There's a dull side and a bright side. Um, you wanna put the rice on the dull side. Um, so basically what you do is you take one sheet and you put it down and you put these aside and you wanna get a bowl of cold, ice cold water. And your fingers are gonna be constantly dipping in this ice cold water. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna help the rice not stick to your fingers. Now they're still gonna stick to your fingers, but they're, uh, it's not gonna be as bad. Um, so have your mat to the left, because the idea is you're gonna put your rice down and then you're gonna flip it over and then fill it and then roll it. So I'm gonna dip my fingers in the water and I'm gonna grab probably about a baseball size of rice and I'm gonna put it down on the dull side. And the way you wanna do this is don't use your spoon to spread it around because you're gonna smash the rice. Dip your fingers in the cooler water and you're just gonna use the tips of your fingers and walk it up like that. And you want to get the rice all the way up except for the half inch on top. And then um, just keep working it until it's even. Okay, so once you get your rice on here and it's even and it's smooth, while the, the rice is on this side, I like to put a top on uh, um, something to identify what kind of roll it's gonna be. In this case, we're gonna do a spicy porgy, so I'm gonna use a black sesame seed um, sprinkle on top. That way later, when we cut it up and we uh, plate it, we know uh, that it's the spicy one. So basically take your, uh, your sesame seeds and you're just gonna do a light. Once you get your sesame seeds, you're gonna grab the roll like this, and you're gonna bring it up, and then you're gonna lay it down upside down like this towards you. All right, so now we're actually gonna fill it with, with uh, whatever you want. So this is gonna be a spicy roll. So what I'm gonna do is I typically start with laying some um, cucumbers down, and a little goes a long way. So one of the biggest mistakes when I first started making this was uh, putting too much. Then we're gonna put the fish down. This is a porgy. And you kinda of wanna overlap it and have a little bit come off the ends. And I said it's spicy, so I'm gonna take some uh, sriracha. And I'm gonna do a small line right down the middle, just a little bit. And it's good to have, uh, the cucumbers are gonna give it crunch and then the avocado are gonna make it creamy and that gives it some contrast. 
and now we're ready to roll. Okay, so when it comes time to roll, you've got that extra flap. You're basically, you're gonna pull this up and over like that on top of itself and then bring this up, press in to kind of close that and you can check it, it's like that. And now you're gonna give it a little pressure on top and then pull this forward. Do one more. And that's it, that's the roll. And then uh, later we're gonna cut it. Okay, so now we're actually gonna plate, we're gonna cut these down and we're gonna put it on the plate and get ready to eat. When you cut sushi, you wanna use a long, thin knife. You can use a fillet knife. I like to use a bread, serrated bread knife. Uh, but the most important thing is before you cut it, you wanna dip the knife in some cold water and let that, um, let that water bead run down the edge of the blade. And you'll uh, usually do that after each cut. So I usually cut right in the middle and you wanna do long pulling cuts. So you're gonna start in the middle, hold it close by, push and pull. Flip it, there's a roll. That's the grouper. And then I'm gonna dip it again. And then lastly, um, I like to top these with uh, some type of sauce. In this case, I'm gonna use uh, spicy mayo. And this is our spicy corgi. That's it. If you're new to Salt Strong, just know that we're the online fishing club that'll help you catch more inshore saltwater fish than ever before while saving time and money on all the tackle you need. To learn more, go to saltstrong.com. Otherwise, hope to see you again soon. There's something about the water that'll give you peace all by yourself or with your family. Live Salt Strong and wear the line today.